Literacy has always been defined by the technology, right? Before the printing press, your ability to orally recite something meant to be literate. And so as technology has made things cheaper, we're now saying, well, hmm, is someone literate if they cannot critique media, take media in, if they're only taking in traditional text? So if a sixth grader today, by the time they graduate from college, is not fluent, if you will, in some of these other forms of media, I would venture to say that they won't necessarily be considered as being literate. The Digital Youth Network was started over five years ago, really out of trying to understand how we can support youth in learning to use digital media initially for schoolwork. But the more we thought about it and the more we realized how the world was changing and evolving, we realized we really needed to help them understand how to use digital media for all aspects of their life. Our population of youth were urban youth uh, living in the city of Chicago, and we couldn't assume that they were going to learn how to use technologies and media in the way that we wanted in their home life. So we had to figure out how to, how to make it happen within the context of school or in the space where kids connect into school. And we realized that so many efforts around tech integration in school had failed, mainly because the purpose was to try to get teachers to be the ones who taught kids how to use technology. And we just knew that that couldn't be the way to go. First, because our kids were more digitally uh, sophisticated than teachers. We've also then, in the last year, established a partnership with the Chicago Public Library to open up a high school-only space called UMedia, which is a space just for 9th to 12th graders. And in that partnership, the Chicago Public Library provides the space, provides the library, and we provide the digital mentors who collaborate collectively with the librarians to create opportunities, learning opportunities, digital opportunities for youth. We've also created a social network called Remix Learning, and that's a platform that youth use to connect to one, one another 24-7. So the DYN is an after-school program, an in-school program, a shared space with UMedia, and it's also an online social space. What we initially did is we asked teachers to just come and watch and to look at their students and to see their students using technology in a way that was very different from how they were using it in the school. So they saw their students as producers and creators of technology. They saw them creating videos. They saw them creating some video games, music and songs. And what they saw, which many of them talked about, is that they saw students who were quiet in the school day come alive in the after school space. The thing that draw me in about DYN was the studio that was upstairs and that's just like a place that I'd love to be in. It's a spot for inspiration really and on top of the inspiration it's a spot where you have the tools as well to again like I said earlier bring out what you want to what you hear in your head and putting it in front of a camera or in a beat machine or on paper and if you know how to use it this is amazing. <laughs> I think we've structured our work with students in such a way to try to create a cycle where they are developing the skill sets, but they're constantly making use of those skills in ways that are, you know, first personally beneficial, but also beneficial to their society. We have a trajectory, if we will, is first you're just a regular DYN kid and you're learning how to use digital media. And if you choose to like really develop a passion to geek out, if you will, in one area, then you can become a junior mentor because now you've developed a set of skills that we think can be used to teach others. And at that point, there's a set of responsibilities that come with that. One is you're responsible for working with those who are younger and teaching them how to do what it is that you do. But then you also get more specialized support and mentoring to help take your skill sets to a different level. Um, you get opportunities to be professional and to go record your work. And if you really are, do this for a couple of years and you've demonstrated some mastery, if you will, you can get paid to do this particular work. I started off as just a student, but now I'm getting paid to do what they do. And uh, that's how long I've been with it. And now I actually have my own class and I used to just be a part of the class. And I don't know any teenager or a senior in high school that has a class full of students where they get to teach and create their own curriculum. I think the ways in which most technologies have been brought into the classroom and, and videos and things, they've come in with an, a natural audience. So I think if you were just doing a video that only your teacher saw, I think eventually you would get to the point that that would be the same as doing an essay. You know, but I think because oftentimes they're brought in which you're going to share it with your classmates, you can take it and share it with your parents or with your friends, that that motivates you to do work. But before his voice box was completely boxed in, he thought to himself, why should I silence myself? 
Part of what we've also been trying to understand is, well, does this matter? What impact does it have besides, yes, it's good, a kid can make a video or a podcast? Does it lead to a set of portfolio or a set of skill sets that uh, it can impact their life? So we did a three-year ethnography on a group of kids starting from the sixth grade, in their sixth grade year, following them all the way through the end of their eighth grade year. And the question really was, okay, so what? Does this matter? And we needed to compare them to a group of kids who we felt were probably ex uh, exemplifying what digital natives should be. And so we chose to compare our kids to a group of kids in Silicon Valley, kids who grew up in environments where it was just sort of in the water, uh, the use of digital media, their parents work for tech firms. And we wanted to see, could we create an ecology, if you will, a cocoon of, of in-school, after-school, online, uh, social capital here in Chicago, where our kids could begin to look like those kids in terms of the digital, their digital portfolios. And so starting at the beginning of the sixth grade year, as one would suspect, 96% of our kids have fewer digital media experiences, um, portfolios, if you will, than the kids in Silicon Valley. And every year we tested and we, you know, we looked at where we were going. At the end of the sixth grade year, beginning of seventh grade year, I think 76% uh, of our kids had more experiences than the kids in Silicon Valley. And at the end of the eighth grade year, I believe the number is more like 86 or 84% of our kids had more, have more experiences. Almost any kid that you look at and you say, oh wow, this is a great user of digital media, you can trace back. There's a parent, there's a, you know, a program, there's something that uh, inspired them and developed them and that we need to make sure that we have those types of programs and those people represented equally throughout uh, all of society.